a piece of board. <laughs> <laughs> All right, MMA Maniacs, it's time once again for your weekly MMA podcast called Split Decision, brought to you from the Rula Family Inc. Studios. Bueller Dodge Dennis ready to break you off some MMA news right now. Yo. Bellator is going down. Uh, Paul Semtex Daily going up against Rory the Red King McDonald. Uh, it, it's, it's, I don't think we're on the main event yet. Oh, yeah. Main event started. Has it? Yep. Well, then. We'll probably get the results. We'll, we'll yell spoilers later. We'll fucking tell you when this is over. Or no, I just want I it. just want to do a pick series where we got every single one of them right. Every single one. Yeah. All of them. Uh, that would be a very <laughs> short episode. <laughs> where all three of us got them right? No, we're, because they already have it, dude. If I have the Boom! whiteboard this shirt. Oh, man. If I, I have the whiteboard this shit. <laughs> <laughs> right here. There's right my there, fucking right whiteboard there. right there. <laughs> Uh, anyway, thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Of course, we're going to break you off some MMA news. We'll talk about Bellator, which is happening right now. There's no UFC this weekend. There's not one until the 28th, I believe, next which week. is next week. Uh, but we do have lots of stuff to go over. So with all that said and done, it's time to jump into my MMAnews.com, who has a Facebook group now. Uh, this page is for fans of my MMAnews.com to talk, share opinions, fight picks, and communicate with staff members. Please keep clean. Nope. Uh, if you have to ask, it's probably not allowed. What if I have to? I have, to I have questions. I have questions too. Can I wipe my butt? Uh, no nudity. I'm out. No pornographic material. I'm out. Definitely out. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm packing my Damian Maya, and I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> and no illegal videos or photos. I don't know what that means. Can you please give me a definition on what an illegal no video sick or birds. photo is? You can't post any picture of any sick birds, especially if they happen to be American bald ones. What about a, <laughs> what about a crow? Maybe. You know what? It's the Portuguese woman, when it gets real hairy, it looks like a crow. <laughs> is, that, is, it? <laughs> is it? Wait, is it? Is it? A, is it a crow or is it a macaw? <laughs> macaw. I guess if they're dyeing it like different colors. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, then that's a toucan, <laughs> which is also another description. It's a, no, it's a it's a pelican. <laughs> wow. Or a hungry, hungry hippo, and no illegal. Wait, no spam, no harassment. So, except for Eric, you can harass him all you want. Harass him all, and in. no politics. Yeah. Aside from that, we'll jump into Dana White, Conor McGregor agree to terms on the Mayweather matchup. I don't understand why this is still a thing. Ah. Uh, um, I don't understand why this is making huge news. It gets clicks, dude. Yeah, That's why. Apparently, it gets clicks. So, again, getting this from MyMMAnews.com. You can check that out. Uh, Dana White was on TNT Wednesday Night Basketball, uh, where he was watching. I mean, obviously, it's his favorite, journalism. His, obviously, if it's his, on my his, MMA news. His his <laughs> team, the Boston Celtics, are going against the Cavs, <laughs> and he said, "Look, the McGregor side is done. I'm working on the Mayweather side now. I'm not saying the fight will happen, but we got one side done. Now we got to work on the other." McGregor then put on his own website, "It's an honor to sign this record-breaking deal alongside my partners, Zufa LLC, you, the Ultimate Fighting Championship and Paradigm uh, Sports Management." So he said this is the first more and most important part of the historic contract has now officially been signed off. Congratulations to all parties involved. We now wait Al Hyman and Boxer's signature in the upcoming days. So this was like within the last seven days that, yeah. that Dana White came out and said that Connor fucking screwed the pooch. Yep. And then yeah, said, here nope, we are. we're good. We're good. We got it all signed. Our side signed. We're just waiting on McGregor. Or excuse me, we're waiting on Mayweather. Yeah, of course. Of course we are. So it's my thing is, is who gives a shit if your side is signed? This fight's still not happening. Like, you signed a contract with uh, your partners to see how much money they're going to get if, in fact, you actually get a contract to box. That's, that's pretty much Pretty it, much right? what it comes yeah. down to, right? Yeah. Who cares? I, I think... I that's th like saying, uh, yeah, I signed with uh, the 49ers to have a, you know, chess tournament against the greatest chess player in the world. Nobody cares because that guy hasn't, doesn't even know I exist and he <laughs> signed a contract with me. <laughs> I think Mayweather's <laughs> going to sign at some point. You this, think so? I, I do. Just for the spectacle of it. Uh, Dana White came out to make sure to tell fans this was not an MMA bout. This is a boxing bout. Yeah. Um, no shit. Uh, yeah. We've been, <laughs> we know this for a fucking year, by the way. Uh, Surprise, motherfuckers. So it's, it's going to be a shitty sideshow boxing match, in my opinion. Yeah. We'll see what ends up happening. Uh, obviously, we were talking 60 -40, about... 60-40? What do you think? The split? Yeah. From, is that Dana White and his partners and Conor no, McGregor, or you mean think, actually when Mayweather Connor signs? Mayweather, yeah. I don't know how you uh, how you would seventy thirty. Well, seventy thirty. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I thought it, it. They're saying seventy five and a hundred million. That's that's the that's the upfront split. I don't know that in a fraction. Science? Do you? What the, that split? Seventy five and a hundred. I mean, it'd be like what eighty something, right? It's like one and three quarters. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> so 80 20? No, 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 no. It'd be like 60 40. No, it's 60 40. It's close to 60 40. Yeah. 80 20. 80 20. 70 30? No, no, close to 60 Because the way. 75.6. Hey, the, the way it was broken with down. The three that continues with on. Yeah. <laughs> with yeah. the bar over the it. The bar over yeah. the three because it just keeps Yeah, down. you guys stared at me for a second. Totally broke me. <laughs> yeah. No, it's like close You're a married man now. It's easy to break you. <laughs> He's already broken. It's already Aww. broken. We're just shuffling around the pieces. Uh, <laughs> wah, wah. It's actually, it's like 65, 35. I don't care what's anymore. The, what's the remainder? Just about, just like this fight. I don't care anymore. No, I, do you care anymore? There's, no, I don't care. I don't care anymore. I think it's the biggest fraud being perpetrated on anybody on either oh, side of the sport. Oh, <laughs> Wait, what? Are we talking about marriage or fights? <laughs> Both. <laughs> The eight most heated exchanges during face-offs in the UFC. No, no. I don't know. I was just You're making shit up. So, uh... You scrolled down. <laughs> you fucking scrolled down. That's not my We're part. talking about the UFC Summer Kickoff Presser, which was going live the last time we were on the air. Right. So this is everything that happened at this as you were kind of trying to read it as it was going. Right, okay. So... We had a lot of things go on. First of all, we have uh, Kevin Lee looking like he came out of a Luke Cage comic book. Uh, or maybe Woodstock. I don't know. <laughs> Both. Yeah. Both. Um, he basically... Uh, can, I, can I just pause real quick uh -huh. and just say, like, this definitely showcased uh, Conor McGregor saying... Or not, sorry. Uh, uh, Nate Diaz saying, everybody is a personality. They just have to embrace it. Yep. And it looked like everybody embraced it at this Pretty much. kickoff. Pretty much. And there was a couple people that were just sitting there like... This yeah, is there were great. a few, but there were a lot of personalities. This is fucking great. <laughs> we, got, we got Kevin Lee, like you said, looking like he's somebody out of Luke Cage's comic book. Uh, you had Betch Korea walking around like she was... You don't talk about a, someone's mom. We'll get to that. You do. Uh, Kevin Lee first took, took you on... You talk about my kids. Took on uh, Conor McGregor. <laughs> Uh, basically, dodge, basically dodge. saying that he stole everything from his culture. He's trying to take from our culture, the hood culture, the hip-hop culture... Uh, he said, if anything, it ain't nothing better than being young, black, and rich, so I'm going to keep going. Okay. Uh, he says, uh, re real recognize real, and I see fake in him. Don't compare me to him because uh, ain't nothing better. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, I mean he then went on to later talk to uh, about Chizia, his opponent coming up. So this is the fight that's going to be announced. Obviously, we have uh, Kevin Lee going up against Michael Chizia. And he, they asked Chizia, they said, you know, how do you, how do you feel about Kevin Lee? Like, what, how do, what do you know about him? He says, look, he popped up on my radar when he beat Trinaldo. We had the same common opponents. I saw him when he finished Francisco. He says, I mean, aside from me, he looks like some dork that got kicked out of Woodstock. I don't know why he's disrespecting my mullet. The champion, the Bantamweight champion, women's champion of the world sitting in front of me. She got a mullet, so it's cool. Uh, but <laughs> he's a tough kid, and he's like, he's going to get beat up. Lee says immediately, I ain't even going to talk shit. You know, you got Mike over there. We're talking about Mike Johnson. Michael Johnson talking like he's going to kill somebody. He got 30 fights, lost half of them, and hadn't killed a motherfucker yet. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> that and, was a good one. And I like Mike. I like Chizia. I'm doing him a favor. I'm going to change his life June 25th. Chizia goes back and says, yeah, uh, I'm going to get another $50,000 bonus. They go back and forth. He says, uh, basically says, I hope he shows up because I know his mama got tickets. That's what Chizia has got crazy. And said, don't ever fucking talk about my mom. Don't ever fucking talk about my mom. Don't ever fucking, like, nonstop, don't ever fucking talk about my mom. Stood up, started moving towards him, told security, are you going to get in between us? Did he throw a chair? No, then he no. started running towards him. He started no. running towards and him. Fucking... <laughs> Wait, he said security, you're going to stand between us? Yeah. Now? Then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run out of his ass. So he ran right. at him. Uh, Lee stands up and actually threw a punch through security and, like, barely tagged Jizia. They had to separate them both. Sit them down. No, Chizzy went off stage, didn't they? They both took him off stage. Yeah, they both guys off got taken off stage, stage until right. the very end. Right. And then they wouldn't even let them do a face off. Like they kind of and they're like, no, never mind. Um so you have that situation going. on. say about my mama. Then you had uh <laughs> She doesn't have tickets. That's all I said. <laughs> no, no, she, she has tickets. No, she has oh, tickets. She has tickets. You better show up because your mama got tickets. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she she has wolf tickets. That's what she got now. Uh Michael Johnson. Uh, is going to be welcome just, welcoming Justin Gaethje to the UFC. And he said, listen, Justin had Worlds and World Series of Fighting, but you come over to the UFC, you won't have a war with me. We're going to bang, don't get it wrong, you're out of your league. Uh, Justin Gaethje says, he's right, I wasn't a Division One All-American. He goes, this isn't wrestling. He says, well, I'm going to kick your leg off, I wouldn't break you. And he goes, this isn't wrestling or kickboxing. <laughs> he says, look, I'm not here, this is Gaethje, I'm not here to talk shit, I'm here to, I'll do my talking in the cage, that's all I care about, I'm preparing right now, I'm a violent motherfucker, I'm the most violent lightweight in, on this planet, and I will prove that. And uh, he says, you're going to find out. You're going to find out. He says, you can't swim in these. I like this. He says, uh, it's going to be a march a march to deep waters. You ain't going to last. You're going to swim in these waters. Johnson says, deep water? I don't need to swim. I do all my fighting on land, player. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't talk again 
They ask him about the, you know, about his his octagon experience. Michael John says, "Look, I'm not a gatekeeper." <laughs> Which gate? He says, "Yeah, you are." <laughs> wow! Wow! He says, "Look, he's like, I'm here to take over and win this title. I'm not here to welcome some guys from the C League. Uh, I'm not going to win a decision or by a point. I'm literally going to take this man's life." Gaethje starts yelling, "Yeah, I want to die. Let's go!" <laughs> you ain't taking nobody's life yet, man. <laughs> Going on, going on. So basically, uh, you think he's just gonna sit there and let you kill him? <laughs> just let, just sit there and let, let you, you kill, kill me? him? Am yeah. I John? Am John I John? We'll get to John Jones DC here in a second. We all said <laughs> Amanda Nunes, Valentina Shevchenko. Uh, going on and on. Uh, Nunes says, "Look, I don't understand. Like, I already beat this girl. I beat her already. I'm gonna do it again." Um, he, I think we have a chance to decide what's what I want to do with my next step after this fight. We'll it see. It was after a this decision fight. last time. It was a decision. Man. She didn't says decisively beat anybody. Shevchenko says you have two months to talk. I mean, you said decisively, but it was a decision. It so was a decision. That's, that's so, it was close, but that's like by definition decisive. It was. It was. <laughs> I don't care. She won two rounds to one. What if like I like loosely use terms like league or <laughs> other things? <laughs> I'm just saying, if you opened up a dictionary to league or decisively, then you would find. Decisively is by decision. What if you looked into the source? Yeah, well, then you got comparisons. There you go. <laughs> uh, so anyway, they started talking back and forth. <laughs> yeah, you cut one of those open and like, go into like a tauntaun. <laughs> 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 uh, they uh, at their at what their... is a comparative word for the source? Is there one? Book of rhymes. I don't book know. of rhymes. I don't think it's book of rhymes. No, it's <laughs> I think it's book of comparisons. <laughs> book, of, book of comparative book of, definitions. Book of analogies. <laughs> no, I don't. No. <laughs> In what the does Shemanko, your butt have to do with anything? In the Shevchenko Nunes face-off... <laughs> Can we delete this and start over? <laughs> uh, at the, at the Shevchenko Nunes face-off... Shevchenko. Shevchenko. Whatever, dude. Look, man, I'm trying to help you out. Zero. I don't fucking care. <laughs> Line underneath it means it's never going to change. <laughs> <laughs> it's got the fucking bar over the three. The remainder goes on forever. forever. Zero. Forever. <laughs> I don't just put an infinity sign up there. I don't fucking care. Turn that eight sideways. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> oh, mm, uh, all right. Nunes was shown to actually shove Valentina. Is that yes. better? Not yes. Nunes yes. to her face. Nunes. <laughs> He's just saying it really fast. Yeah. <laughs> so she says the reason she did that is because Valentina actually touched her chin first, it and it was on the other side, away from the camera. You couldn't quite it's see just it. Just a little one. Yeah. And she said that's why she shoved her knuckles and forward. She said, whatever, yeah. whatever, whatever. Shove her knuckles where? Forward. Oh. Definitely forward. forward. This was this whole thing was creating heroes and heels. Yeah, like, I, this thing felt very WWE. It really did, man. I, after watching it, after we were done here last week, going back and seeing all the clips that were put online, it was ridiculous. So then, the big obviously story from this whole thing is John Jones, and Danny Cormier are going to fight uh, in July. Uh, of course, everyone is asking John Which Jones. Which we like, announced during the yeah. How does it feel? He says, "Look, he week. never beat me." Uh, this is John Jones. He never beat me. The belt over there is an imaginary belt. I messed up outside the octagon. I got mine taken away, but this guy's never beaten me. In order to be the champion, you have to beat the champ. Uh, I'll fight all the other light heavyweights. He can fight all the light heavyweights he wants until he beats me. That belt is a piece of shit. Uh, exactly. Cormier just says, is he back? Is he really back? I mean, doesn't he have back, two, junkie? Does he have two months of suspension left? Is he really back? Yeah, they call him junkie. The junkie. Um, and then he says... Uh, you know, he's like, I see him over there, but is he really going to be in Anaheim? Is he really going to be there? Is this guy really going to go to the fight? Is this guy going to mess this up by doing steroids or snorting cocaine or sandblasting prostitutes? I need to know what that is. What is sandblasting prostitutes, it's, Joey? It's I knew you, a guy in radio would know. It's when you snort cocaine off their butt. Okay. That's sandblasting? That's sandblasting. Well, there you go. Sandblasting, sandblasting prostitutes. Is this guy going to mess this up this time? <laughs> John Jones is upset with prostitutes. I'm sorry, Vegas. I know I wasn't supposed to tell. Prostitutes. Go. And he goes, I beat you after a weekend of cocaine. And prostitutes. <laughs> is what Cormier At which said. point, Chuck Liddell was all, that's cute. <laughs> <laughs> Hold my beer. Uh, John Jones says, Daniel Cormier has shown me absolutely nothing since our last fight. He has not progressed whatsoever. Anthony Johnson gave him the win. Um, he says, I feel like Anthony Johnson gave him the win. I saw nothing out of Daniel. The Anderson Silva fight was even worse. I'm excited to whoop his ass again. Which is really shitty for Anthony Johnson because Anthony Johnson came in at a win and he got ragdolled the entire yeah. time, just like Daniel Cormier did against John Jones. Yeah. yeah. That's that's a really weird like trifecta of, of, of and then gatekeeper shit. Andrew, I don't know why Anthony Johnson decided to try to wrestle him in the second fight. Yeah. Like, So I really hope that Daniel Cormier doesn't try to wrestle 
Uh, John Jones in their second fight. But he's obviously, supposed to be a better wrestler. Obviously, that didn't work out too well for him in the first fight. He but, tried to wrestle what, him for five else, fucking rounds. What else is he going to do? Out jab a guy who's got eight <laughs> inches of reach on him? The, the pterodactyl? I'm just saying. I don't know how you out jab a pterodactyl. Daniel, so quit other, hitting yourself. Daniel, other, quit hitting yourself. The other news from this is that obviously we have Cody Garbrandt going up against TJ Dillashaw. Possibly. If the stem, if the stem cell treatment possibly. works. No, it's it, was, it was announced that Cody Garbrandt no. had to go to get stem cell treatment into his back because he was having back problems. The first set didn't work. They flew him to Germany. We talked about this. The, the Germany steroids. The, right. Yeah, he, the, they the flew the him bulk, to Germany. Yeah. Where, stem cells, where, not steroids. Where Dana White says he got his stem cells and a multiple other athletes, and mm. it's never not worked from Germany. Oh, shit. Cody's going to go bald now. It's never not worked <laughs> from Germany. So now they're looking at uh, uh, a DJ-TJ fight in November. Except for I DJ believe. says, no, I'm not cool with that. I have nothing to gain from that. No, he said that last week. Today it's yeah. different. I haven't seen that yet. <laughs> no, today's different. Uh, today, today, DJ is saying if if uh, he gets monies, he wants the monies. Well, he's always it. said he wants the monies. Yeah. So, but the fights we do have announced. Obviously, we have Kevin Costello is going to fight Chris Weidman UFC Fox Twenty Five in Long Island, which I don't understand how this fight got made. Uh, Isn't he still under the pot suspension? Well, if I can, he won't be by then. Wait, if I can jump back for just a second, if uh-huh. I if I remember what I read earlier, uh, it's, jump a, back. it's it's a, it's DJ TJ. At uh, the Madison Square Garden mm-hmm. in November, mm-hmm. uh, co-main event, mm-hmm. and DJ makes a million off of that. Okay, that's that's what I remember allegedly. today. Allegedly, yes, allegedly, one hundred percent. Never gonna happen. <laughs> See, the payment seems doable because Madison Square Garden. It's easy for them to make over twelve million at the gate. I think they made like seventeen million at the gate for Connors. Okay. Well, also announced during the of gates. The, the summer kickoff is the new minor league contender series for the UFC, which will be shown on Fight Pass called Dana White's Tuesday Night Contender Series. So creative. Is this uh, like, like, so you're looking for a fight? But This is so you're looking for a fight, but this is so Dana doesn't have to travel. This is everybody come to my gym uh, at the Ultimate Fighter gym and do the fights there because I'm tired of fucking traveling. Okay. Um, and his family's probably tired. The guy's got kids, man. Yeah, he's got kids. And the motherfucker so, brings snow to his house in Nevada. I don't care. Haters gonna hate Joe. I don't feel bad for you. I don't feel bad for you. Um, don't do it. This is also very much like Elite XC used to have their show, Show MMA, on Showtime. Do you remember that? Yes. I it do. was a contender series, kind of trying to build. God, so short lived. Show MMA. Oh my God. You remember? Yeah. Yeah. yeah trying it was to build. Like after Showbox, then Show. Yeah, it was okay. Show MMA. And so mm-hmm. what they did was it was partnered with Elite XC. Showtime was partnered with Elite XC, and they would have fights on Showtime, building their stars, and then eventually they would make their way over to Elite XC. Mm-hmm. You know, Strike Force Challenger Series, same exact thing. Again, it was on Showtime. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. So this is the same thing. Now it's going to be on Fight Pass. So just, cool for the UFC I'm, I'm to just, see. Do you have shirts from those? Up and coming guys? I don't. I have a poster. <laughs> we have a poster for from a uh, Contender Showbox? Series. Show MMA? It's I think under, Contender Series, one of them. It might be Nate. this one. It's under Nate. It's, it's Somewhere. one of these. Right. I, there's that Strike Force one over there. It's a thing. It's yeah. a thing. It, it, was, it was a thing. I do have a Strike Force shirt, though. I do, too. I have the old school logo. I don't know what logo mine is. <laughs> <laughs> mine's the one with the fist that used to be on the belt. Remember that one? Definitely not mine. Yeah. No, no, mine's just Strike Force. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that was announced. And then let's see what we got here. We got, uh, yeah, so during the UFC fight, which we'll get to a little bit later, the UFC uh, 211, Joanna Zizek, her uh, little <laughs> box down Good here. Good job on that name. Right? Joanna <laughs> Champion. Right through that. Uh, can I get a one? We get a. <laughs> let's turn it back to zero. <laughs> uh, it, it said in her little box, you know how they always say, like, strawweight champion, undefeated, like, yeah. uh, explosive and athletic. Her said, number one pound per pound female fighter in the world. And a bunch of people jumped and flipped out on it, being like, how she's only fought 10 fights. I don't understand how she's the number one pound really? per pound fighter. Like, it's not, how, how is she going to be the number one pound per pound fighter? In fact, somebody asked Chris Cyborg, how do you feel about that? And she said, uh, who is the best MMA fighter of all times? I'll let the fans decide. Media can influence fans. The truth always appears, just like with American hero Ronda Rousey. She's sounding very WWE here. Uh, Jeez, that picture is killing me right now. Then she said... Uh, like, literally, I want to tap that picture. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, scary. She sorry. Like female Blanca on the left side. She does. You're not, oh, my God. Yeah. You're not wrong. She You're says, uh, my, UFC debut, <laughs> my UFC debut was a year ago. In reality, I've already fought five fights under my UFC contract. The UFC should have given me, or if they would have given me my belt, like they did with Ronda Rousey, I would have broken the record of title defenses already. So then I thought immediately, wait, hold on a second. 
They would have given you belt already. Okay, let's see. So you were the Strike Force champion because that's how Ronda got her belt. She's a right. Strike Force champion, right. correct? Right, right, right. She was given it because she was a Strike Force champion when the UFC bought Strike Force. Mm-hmm. So uh, Cyborg was the Strike Force champion. She defended it three times. On uh, on she won it, defended it twice. On the third time, she got busted for steroids. That's 2011. Okay, so you're no longer a Strike Force champion. So maybe if you were the Strike Force champion when the UFC bought it, at the it, conception of the women's division, you would have UFC. You would have been given your belt, but just no, like Jose Aldo moved from still, WEC, just like anybody else. But they because pulled over. you got stripped, because you got stripped, you and were not the champion at the time. She couldn't make 135. She couldn't make 135. So no. Then we move she over to. She could barely make 145 when she fought Gina Carano. Then, then we, then we move Your over to Gina Carano. She comes back from from her steroid. <laughs> sus- she comes back from her steroid suspension. 2013. She has a title eliminator Invicta. It, again, a whole new organization, not owned by the UFC, in partnership with, but not owned by the UFC. Right. Uh, then wins the title and has defended it now twice. So I don't, I don't know if you can math, Cyborg. But <laughs> three, one win, Dude, one, one he win. He just seen that picture, and now he's calling her one out. One win, two defenses. One win, two. Def- that's that's six. So you would have tied Ronda's record if it was in the same fucking organization, which it's not. Send your email to dodge at dodgemail dot com. Dodge the fucking case on that one. <laughs> like I just told her, like, she's, no, you're not wrong. And then she says she's undefeated for ten years. With no, the exception she, of a no contest, she, right? So she, she would be. So she got beat by a blood test. She got beat by a blood test. So is that like John Jones is undefeated? He, yeah. Well, I mean, no, not Mahamel. <laughs> right. So and it, and got on, beat by back onto the, yeah back onto the John Jones thing. You know, I don't know if you've seen when uh, Luke Rockhold called out Dana about who deserves what, and he said, mm-hmm. "Well, Bisbing never lost his title." Well, technically, John Jones never lost his title either. He got stripped twice, and GSP stripped, never lost but he his never title. lost it. But he never lost it. <laughs> so to Sean somebody. Shirk is still the champion. I think. There you go. <laughs> I, I, think, I think technically, if you get like if I stripped you of your wallet and you got home, you'd be like, "Fuck, I lost my wallet." You lost the belt. I, I didn't strip lose it you to of your somebody. belt. <laughs> you lost it to me. If I stripped you of your wallet, yeah, then you, well, you we didn't do it in the ring. Well, no, I would do it in passing. <laughs> yeah, you, you had would. to sneakily steal my wallet. <laughs> of course, very, very you wouldn't come up to me like I'm taking your wallet. Not unless I was heavily yeah, armed. That's right. And, they would, and when they wouldn't do that to John Jones either. So she we, continues to say that Joanna is a great athlete, an example of what the UFC machine can do in terms of promotion and marketing. My last five fights, three were on Fight Pass. Joanna fought once on Fight Pass. Was on the TV show Ultimate Fighter, and normally fights as the co-main event uh, under fighters like McGregor and Ronda. That's a lot of what marketing can do over any athlete. I'm the only athlete, man or woman, that's finished 90% of her fights uh, by knockout. She's saying she could have had the same thing if they wanted to push her. No. That Joanna has been built by marketing. Do you feel Joanna's been built by marketing? I No, I don't agree with that at all. I no, because they actually just start marketing her. They, they really still haven't started marketing her like, like they have other fighters. She's one of the few fighters I remember because she's awesome to watch. Yeah. 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 Right. No, she's talented. She. Yeah. Hey, this is. I'm going to go out and. I mean, we saw her first fight in 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 San Jose in the UFC. Right. right. Okay. She was on the prelims. Right. Yeah. And then she moved up, and then she challenged for the title. She didn't go on the Ultimate Fighter. She challenged for the title. Yeah, Even she went on the Ultimate Fighter as coach we seen, When we seen her in San Jose, we were, we were like, man, this is not fair. Damn. We've, we've <laughs> seen, and, that's, and that's the thing is that we've seen, and I'm going to be sexist here for a second, but we've seen a lot of women who have fallen victim to the marketing machine that is the media, and they don't do well. Like just because... Paige? I'm, I'm not dropping names, but yes. Uh, <laughs> just but because, radio will. <laughs> just, just because you have that marketability, just because you look good, doesn't make you a championship material. And we Seth, have... Seth, or uh, Sage Northcutt? Cue the Sarah yeah, Kaufman song. No, it, you, you, I mean, you want to you you go men's side? Sage yeah. Northcutt. You were signed... Balance it out. And put Balance it on there it because out. you're a model. Uh, and you know, you're, yeah. you're all this stuff, but you really haven't shown the fans much. Yeah, Luke, I mean, you lost your title and you're a model, whatever. You but know? I still, <laughs> Luke actually held belts for for a fight and strike force for, for a fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. McGregor held a belt, got choked out, and they're still pumping him. He still has the belt, because which by the way, we can, get to, line. we can get to that story right now. This motherfucker taking an Instagram picture showing he got four belts. From the UFC, and nobody knows how. Nobody. Wait, you Connor? Won? Yeah. You got one. That Wait, you... Demetrius just got all ten of his belts. Connor's got four? He's got four. So he got one when he beat Mendez for the interim. So he's got three Demetrius Johnson's belts. Hold on. That's got to be what it is. <laughs> he's, got, he's got one that he got from de- defeating Mendez for the, the interim. Okay. He got Jose Aldo's belt when he defeated him. Uh-huh. He got 
uh, Eddie Alvarez's belt when he defeated him. Uh-huh. And he... I don't know where the other one comes from. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's multiple... Toys R Us. People that are saying, A, he used to carry one around, just like uh, Chael Sonnen used to do, so yeah. it might be that one. Two, is it the belt that he stole from Aldo? What, like Tim Sylvia, who yeah. used to wear it to Walmart. Walmart. But you remember, remember <laughs> Chael used to show up for interviews with a belt, even though he never won a championship? Yes, yes, yes. Because yes, he yes. says he's the true champion? Well, allegedly, Connor's done that before, before okay. he actually won his belts. Then you got the one that he stole from Aldo off the, the podium, remember that? Wait, didn't Aldo get that back? He did get it back, at least from the video I That's saw. That's what we think. And then there is, of course, the... The Woodley belt. The Woodley belt that he was given for his pictures in the octagon that he may have never given back. Uh, right. Right. So we don't know where Connor's fourth yeah. belt is. Well, you know... But, Woodley, of course, Woodley everyone still backlashed. Company, man. Everyone still backlashed him and said, Cool, you got four belts, even though one we don't know where the fuck came from. How about you defend one of them? Right. Yeah. And he's in uh, Mayweather's that's... night robe. And some busted ass socks. <laughs> I don't even know how you have a but million dollars. He's and got, got his, he's got his baby. In him. He's got his baby Wait. sitting in all his belts, and he says, "All right, son, it's time to go get some boxing belts." And it's not even for a belt because the guy's retired. <laughs> you would have to fight Keith Thurman for the belt or Canelo. Defend something. Defend <laughs> something. Something. Defend and earn it. Did you Defend hear Dana? It? Did you hear Dana using our slogan? Yeah. You want something? Earn it. Earn it. Earn it. That's right. He was like, spoken in the true words is a split decision. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? If, if I come to, like, Winco and you're there and, like, you and I both go for the same ham. Are you still in my wallet again? And I, and I get Your the ham, ham wallet. And I get the ham <laughs> and you get the ham at the same time. But I snatch the ham away from you because I'm, you know, I'm the same height, but I'm way heavier. So I take it. And then you want that ham back. Are you going to defend that ham? Or are you just going to be like, I had the ham. Are you doing a ham analogy? I had a, a ham analogy. I'm going to kick your ass in the parking lot and take my fucking ham back. No, he's going to be like. The problem is, no, is that if somebody's Jewish or Arab, they're not going to be going for the ham anyway. But but he's Irish. So he's going to be like. <laughs> so he's going to say, I had the ham. And now a, he has the ham. Is this a ham it's analogy fine. or a meta ham? <laughs> I think it's more of a meta ham. Ham analogies are good. Yeah. I love it's a, ham. It's a ham of <laughs> <laughs> It's got to be a hammer for it. California State Athletic Commission, we talked about this, is going to implement a new weight policy, uh, weight cutting policy, right. and their 10 point plan uh, to protect fighters from um, basically extreme weight cutting and things like that. Now, this is something we've already talked about before. It has been officially approved by the California State Athletic Commission. Okay. They had put it up for proposal. The UFC said we're all for it. The California State Athletic Commission has adopted this plan, so it will be uh, in- implemented for. Uh, starting June 15th for the July 29th bout <laughs> UFC That's 214 you fuck you guys I wasn't even gonna jump on that y'all, I know, he, y'all, he y'all motherfuckers it's, 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 all right, the good. fuck is implemented implemented <laughs> it's a word <laughs> fucking radio's dying it's, it's a word it's implemented <laughs> implemented yeah <laughs> the implementation irregardless all it's right we irre- irregardless <laughs> okay all right okay is it, is it impl- okay. implanted <laughs> is it implanted <laughs> you can't see the deer because it's blending in with their <laughs> because, no it's the, got the, deer. the deer is implanted in with the background <laughs> the thing <laughs> Eric Cal I know you're listening to this motherfucker in like your car or something you're just dying out loud, him or no or, How about this? Or implementation Stevenson. of the program will begin Fuck. everybody in the say, loaded yeah, Joe's yeah. community hey thanks Blake thanks uh, uh, Brian for listening we appreciate that oh, yeah. <laughs> home from work <laughs> Uh, so John Jones will and, and DC will be underneath this new program so DC won't be able to touch the towel I mean, having, having weight cut issues. Oh, yeah? This will no, be anything. No more of this? No more of this. He won't be able to touch really? the towel because John Jones will be holding it up. <laughs> it's like, bring it down here, John. Bring it down. You think I'm just let you hold my towel, John? You think I'm just let you hold my towel? <laughs> so it's it's, it's going to cover DC's face. It's like, His little junk swinging. No, it'll be the speedo. It's not Mark Hunt. <laughs> whoa, whoa. According to the, according to the doll. According to the doll. <laughs> oh. oh shit! Poor Mark. <laughs> this is terrible. Stop it. Some happy news: Raquel Pennington proposed to Tisha Torres. They're now engaged. All right. That's, also, some happy news for Rocky. Two Her levels photos. of hotness that are completely off the. Hey, man. Also, also happy news for Raquel Pennington. Her photos have been taken down from multiple websites. <laughs> oh, I saved them. If you want them, you can email them. No, no, <laughs> nobody has them. 
Dennis at DennisMail.com. Nobody has <laughs> them. <laughs> Why would you admit to this shit? <laughs> There's like three lawyers that are like, I don't have Can you them. say that one more time? I never saw those ever. They're like ambulance chasers, man. Who, who is it? That chick right there in the leggings thing? Oh, I don't know. Thing? Uh, right. Joe Silva is going to be inducted into the UFC Hall of Fame. Dennis at DennisMail.com. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about Joe Silva getting in the Hall of Fame? I think he should be. I mean, come on, man. Yeah. One of the greatest matchmakers of all time. What was it, UFC 23? Something like that. It's, Something like it's, that. It's, yeah, it's, it's been, been a long forever. time. No, he started at UFC 2. Shut up. That's what it says. Not matchmaking. Mm, not matchmaking. Maybe working for them. Yeah, working for them. Not matchmaking. Anyway, he's... We've given him a lot of shit on this show. For but, being little? But damn, he's... Being a little person? <laughs> God, don't put me in the Middle East, too. No. <laughs> no. Was it him with John Jones? No, no, no. Nobody no. That was Dave Schaller. Nobody no. picked up Dave Schaller. Okay, okay. Don't pick up Joe Silva. Just, you don't pick up <laughs> Joe Silva. Right. Don't pick up Joe Silva. Don't pick because, up Joe Silva. <laughs> which, uh, Jake Thompson was the one who figured that out. He picked him up and carried him, and he was like, <laughs> John started scolding him, and then fucking the athletic commission came over and started scolding him. He's like, oh, shit, I better. And then he got kicked out of the UFC. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he fights an Invicta now. Can't can't do it, man. Can't do it. Uh, so nothing, nothing. We announced <laughs> he, he can't fight an Invicta. He's a dude. <laughs> so uh, we talked about this last week. How Dana White canceled the Bisbing uh, GSP fight, right? Yes. Bisbing says this is still news to him that he just found out uh, via podcast, uh, and he called George St. Pierre and George St. Pierre. I don't know what you're talking about. The fight's still on, as far as I know. But he was the one who announced that he had to have knee surgery or something. So now he's saying, uh, yeah, that he was going to wait until November oh, to fight okay. him. Right. So Dana wait. He's implementing his stall technique. He's implementing oh. He's using implementation of the stall <laughs> nagnating technique. Neil Magny. <laughs> um, so Dana White's coming on ESPN.com and said, well, we're probably going to make Robert Whittaker go up against Joel Romero for an interim belt in this division. I love you, Robert Whittaker. Again, another interim belt. You get one, you get one, you get one. Is it underneath my chair? Yes. Interim belts all the way around. <laughs> Got one right here. Yep, right here. Oh. Got right here. Have you seen the picture of Roll with his big uh, handlebar mustache? No. No. Dude, he's they, he's on something. Because he has a handlebar mustache? He's on Yeezus use. No, no, no. If you see the video, bud, he's out, he's out of hand. I saw a video when I was in eighth grade. With a handlebar mustache? No, some like like peanut butter concoction that you could put on it would make your hair grow i don't want to uh, know what like, you're like talking where about going. Yeah. i don't and then, either and then, I, I think like I one that. kid put it on his head and he got a bunch of hair and then the other kid adult. like put it definitely on his need balls an adult. and he got like he had a Whoa. mustache right there right no. the middle one hey the middle one no, the middle one no wait listen Play no no look Go he ahead. got he got he got a handlebar mustache coming out the bottom of his pants mm-hmm. oh whatever this happened. This is a real video. It's not a thing. It's like goosebumps. <laughs> Do you put it on your face and have dogs lick it off, or maybe, maybe? I don't it's, think that's a mustache. It's implemented. That's a mustache. <laughs> I implement, implement, implement you, you, or is it a mouthpiece? Implemented <laughs> that. No, you're, you're saying okay. It correctly. I thought it was. No, I can't fuck it that's up a, properly. What is that? That's a mouthpiece in his mouth. I don't okay. know. Okay, I thought it was a mustache. I'm sorry, but anyway, look at this guy. He's amped out of his mind. Yeah, he looks like a dark. Bronson. <laughs> Sorry? Like a chocolatey Bronson. Bronson who? It's like Charles Bronson? Implemented. Yeah. Implemented. Yes. Talking like Charlie Bronson, the famous uh, the prisoner, yeah. prisoner without the mustache, though. He needs the mustache. Yeah, but the, 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 the mouth yeah. guard. Like and he does not have a mustache. But not Charles Bronson, right? Not, not Charles Bronson, the actor. Right. No. Charlie Bronson, the prisoner. Yes. The prisoner fighter. He fights in prison, right? Yeah. yeah. He's well, not in prison anymore. He doesn't necessarily fight in prison, like as in no, professionally, he, he fights really, other people. In so prison. now he's an actor. No, no, he's Charles Bronson. No, no, he's Charlie Bronson. No, no. But anyway, I can, I can see where he thought it was a mustache. I can see it. <laughs> so Chocolate Charles Bronson might be fighting Robert Whitaker. Is what we're going for. Welcome to the second dumbest podcast <laughs> we've ever done. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen with Bisbee. Bisbee is having management issues. Apparently, his old manager is suing him. For unpaid fees and expenses dating back for 10 years. Wow. Uh, due to a clause that says that he's supposed to receive 20% commission of all of his fights and earnings. 10 years? That's you can like, only go back seven. It's like when you're going through some old shit. It's the UK, like, though. What? The it's the fuck? UK. They might what have different laws. Oh, yeah. Say? But. Oh, man. 20%? What year is that? 
according oh, to no according to uh, Bisbee, he says no. He said the the contract that he's presented is an old contract. Number one, he's added pages to it since then, which I did not sign any amendments to. Not only that, but uh, a lawyer, uh, litigation lawyer, uh, what is this, Eric McEgrain, who helped with the article that I was reading here, says that looking at everything in the United States, unless you apply as a manager in each athletic commission, you're not entitled to shit. Well, unless you do trying it, to get. He's unless, trying to get money. Unless you do it before the fights. So he might not get anything. Titan FC coming out and saying that they are the premier feeder league. Finally, someone who knows the place. UFC. <laughs> wow. Way to, like, just embrace that. Yeah. Good for you. Saying that they are the premier promotion. Big hugs. Big hugs, Titan. Big hugs. Big to, hug, uh, to basically be the number one funnel to get into the UFC. He says we've, we're no better stage to get yourself in the UFC than Titan FC. Because uh, they're on Fight Pass. We're now on Fight Pass. They have a great, a great uh, set of cards that they put on there. They said Desmond Green, their former featherweight champion. Uh, was in the UFC. We have Bella Muhammad went to the UFC. Was their champion as well. Brett we Johns, go, another Ralph. champion, Shit. went in. Uh, <laughs> we are the ultimate funnel hole. What? The ultimate funnel hole <laughs> for the best prospects in the country. Is that like butt funneling? Is that a thing? They always we always wind up with the best prospects. <laughs> They're a funnel hole. Do you find glory? In no, it's it's, it's it's a butt chugging thing. Funnel hole. You put a beer funnel in your butt hole. It's in your funnel hole. You, yeah. All right. They funnel premium quality fighters. They Pre- funnel them. Quality. Funnel them all in. Uh, and then, of course, not, we have Demetrius. Like Paps. Demetrius Johnson uh, basically has a mouth on him now. Smear or Blue Ribbon? Ooh, well, both. <laughs> Can we do both? Yeah. <laughs> DJ's running his mouth. DJ's running his mouth here. Demetrius Johnson, man. Uh, he is saying that. Can you smear my blue rhythm? I'm, MMA I'm fans are the rudest, <laughs> most negative, dumb, and ignorant, but yet the most passionate. What? Who's you talking to? Yeah, he says MMA has the rudest, most negative, dumbest, ignorant fans in the world, but also has the most passionate. Uh, I hear all the time that I should move up and wait. I should fight Conor McGregor. He says, nah, man. He's like, I'm over that. He's like, I want to focus on my division, smash the record. I'm never going to go up to Usain Bolt and say you need to run the 400 meter because you're getting boring in the 100 meter. Uh, he's like, nowhere else in the world. He's like, people that are being that are the best in the sport are going to get paid the best. He's like, you look at what happened. Obviously, you had uh, with CM Punk making way more money than I do in his first fight. You have, like, they should sign the Cash Me Outside girl. She probably sell a lot of tickets for all the shit C talks. Says, you know, that, you know, at some point, you know, that the media doesn't have anything, doesn't help with this. They were saying that Ronda Rousey is the greatest fighter of all time. She could beat Floyd Mayweather. Um, he's like, I'm not taking anything from Ronda, but she, she's a great athlete. She did well, but she had one move, you know, and yet I've never been on Jimmy Fallon. I've never been on Conan O'Brien. She needs to grow the fuck up. Yeah. I, after her loss. 100% agree with uh, uh, Mighty Mouse on all of this. So actually. it's, it is what it is, you know. That's cute. You little people stick together. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I'm tiny. All if right. I, if I win on Atkins, I can fight in his weight class. Do you too. feel that Demetrius Johnson is, is trying to make some noise so that people pay attention to his fights? I mean, he is hands down pound for pound the greatest fighter in the world right now. No, I think he's mad. I finally, think he he's finally down. mad. No, I think he sat down with all these belts and he was like, "I still got the belts and I'm still not happy because I'm not getting paid." And people aren't giving me the respect that I deserve for having all these belts. Because so you, you can have all the hardware you want. But if people don't respect you, it, you're not going to be happy. I, I, I don't think I, I agree with that. I think that somebody, like Dodge said, is like, you have to start making a brand start talking shit. Because his shit talk is terrible. And, and lately, he's bad. been talking a little shit. I mean, he's been getting it's, into it. it yeah, but at bad. this point, it's like Kevin Hart talking shit to you. Like so cute, little Kevin. <laughs> you want to say that to me, Chris Johnson? No, I will to Kevin Hart, though. Yes, yeah. I already. I Wait, see. like Kevin Hart from Get Hard? I'm not saying any specific Kevin Hart. I'm just saying if there is a Hart named Kevin, I would <laughs> say it to him. <laughs> Fair enough. Is that good legal? Legal good with that? Legal's good with that. All right. I'm not legal, but sure. You're, you're legal right now. Yes. <laughs> All right, so going to the UFC. <laughs> your science, your math, your legal, your engineering. Radio. With it. And radio. UFC 211 happened this past weekend. Did you get a chance to watch it? Yes. Yep. Awesome. Uh, wherever you want to start. Uh, well, okay, we can go Courtney Casey up against uh, Jessica Aguilar. Unanimous decision to finish up the uh, prelims on Fight Pass. And then jumping on to FX. You got James Vick. This up against, kid's on a tear. Hey, he found Marco Polo, I'll tell you that. <laughs> he did. He <laughs> found him big time in the first round of 239. He went, Marco, Polo, Polo. good night. <laughs> oh. 
James Vick wins via TKO. Chase Sherman up against Rashad Colton. The Vanilla Gorilla. Yeah, man. This was over at 236. He kept hitting him, round. kept hitting him. Finally, he's like, I should probably throw that elbow. Hey, yeah. yeah, but really at that point, either one of them could have won. Yeah. yeah. And that, that elbow found its Heavyweights own. get 50 tired. grand. It was worth 50 grand to both of them. <laughs> Heavyweights get Chase tired. Sherman won. Jason Knight beats Chaz Skelly via TKO at the third round at 39 yeah. seconds. And we had a no contest. No contest. Eddie where Alvarez, do Dustin Poirier. Where so, do you guys stand on us on, on, on this? Uh, first of all, everyone came out immediately and said, you had a bunch of fighters saying those, le- those knees are illegal. You have a bunch of them saying, no, that one was legal. This one was, was not. You have everybody across the board saying they need to unify the unified fucking rules. Yeah, but that's not the UFC's fault. It's the state-to-state commission. It is, but they're saying, but the UFC does have the opportunity to say, no, this is the rules that we are using. This is what we want to do. They just don't want to because they feel that they're legally responsible then. I will agree they need to unify the unified rules. Yeah. Uh, And at the same time, it's like, if if you're a fighter and you have to deal with these rules, these rules, these rules, these rules. It's very difficult. Then how do you know what you you can do? So you're going into this fight and somebody's telling you, oh, you can knee here, but you can't knee here. That's so this awesome. is what happened, obviously, is you had uh, Dustin Poirier had one hand down. So in the old rules, he's grounded. No knees to the head. For the right. first knee. First two. First two. First two knees. So they threw two knees, it hit him in the head. and Wait, so for the third knee, then you're grounded? Because when he put his other hand down and his knee down, yeah. he was then a grounded opponent. Oh, okay. One, so there was his, like... his, his, his knees were both up. He only had one hand on the ground. That was the rule we bitched about all the time. Like, no, that's what bullshit. I was, what I was Don't play the, was, my hand's is, down, my hand's down, my hand's down. If my hand's down and I take two knees, they're legal. But if my hand's down for a third knee, no, no, still no, no, legal. No, it's still legal. Okay, right. What had happened was his other hand became down. Now he has wow. two hands on the mat. What happened was Not only hands. that, <laughs> but his right knee went down. So he was then on one knee and had both hands on the ground okay. when he got kneed with okay. the third knee. I get so that. I get anytime that. your knees touch the ground, you are a grounded opponent. Both his knees were up, but he had one hand on the ground. In the old right. rules, you could tripod and get kneed and it would be illegal. But then they took that out and said, no, 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 just putting a hand down doesn't give you shit. Right. You have to put both hands down or at least a knee down. Right. Okay. So the so third knee The third was knee illegal. was definitely illegal. Uh, Herb Dean says in his side of it, um, okay, but, let, but let's not even get to what when Herb Dean decides okay. to call it. Let's get to the point where the doctors are talking to him. And they ask him. He didn't weed men. They asked him if he could continue and if he could see. He says yes. Then they he says, but my eye is blurry. At the point that he says it's blurry, it's called. Not necessarily. No, no, but that's how it happened. Okay. Because this is from, this is from Herb Neen. Okay. He went over... To after the illegal knee, right? He went over to the replay, which is allowed, and was going to ask. He says he's talking to Mark Ratner. He says, "I would have disqualified if I believed the knee was intentional." However, the rule that I I rule was Eddie didn't see that his other knee went down, which is why it was unintentional. There's a lot going on. Referees, he's like, we have a little bit of, of leeway between intentional and non-intentional. <laughs> um, so just he, sharing the love. He went over and said, "I don't think he's trying to be a bad person. I think he's trying to fight within the rules. The rules are difficult." Um, so basically, he even told Mark Ratner, "I don't think he can hear me. I don't think he can hear me." When I told him, "Whoa, that lead was an eagle," you know what I mean? So that's why it was. It's been ruled out. So he put he pushed it to a no contest. He would have been disqualified if he felt that it was an intentional knee. He said the third one he didn't feel was intentional. It's been ruled a no contest, yeah. which I think is the best way for it. Rumors are these guys have already got a rematch lined up, and it's going to happen. Good. Um, even Fucking Por- good. Even Poirier said, don't boo this man. It's not his fault. Right. You know, this is just, it is what it is. We need to figure out the rules. I mean, it's pretty crazy. I agree with that 100%. If you if you don't know what you're fighting and what the rules are, and you're adjusting for, for rules based on counties or states or whatever, yeah. it, it makes it really difficult. But the last knee is... Illegal. Illegal. So, okay, now at this point, is that a disqualification or a point? And that's where Herb Dean stepped in and said, I'm not going to disqualify him because it was unintentional. It was an unintentional third knee, illegally. He didn't see that his, his knee had dropped, that okay. Poirier's knee had dropped. Right. So he, at that point, was going to take a point away. Because he could not continue, it's declared a no contest. Right. Okay. 
That's where it became a no contest. If you contest. can't continue due to an illegal contact, then it's They have to figure out if it's contest. intentional or unintentional. Yeah. yeah, just like, who was it back like, in the it's day? A, like an eye poke, right? Who was it back in the day that quit? Uh, what was his fucking name? I didn't like him for the longest time. Came, Jamie Varner. Jamie Varner was fighting oh, Donald Cerrone <laughs> yes, and got hit yes. with an illegal knee. They And they said, all right, well, was it illegal, like intentional or unintentional? Oh, I can't continue. So it immediately got ruled. That it would end it up going. No contest, right? Well, it ended up go, going to decision at that time because the round was almost oh, over. Oh yeah, no, it was uh, the end of the second round. Yeah, right? yeah. And so yep. they gave the points to Varner, and he technically got the win because they had the majority fight. Yep. Yeah, because yeah. the majority of the fight was already in the books. Oh god, that was a fucking mess. Uh, this just in: it looks like uh, Romero versus Whitaker for the interim belt, but also Masasi back in the UFC up against uh, Rockhold. That might be a good fight. Yeah. So we'll, well we, see if that actually if pans it comes out. through comes to fruition. I don't know if that's a fight that Rockhold wants, man. I'm excited for it. Uh, I would love to see Rockhold against Masasi. I think that's it's it's bad for Rockhold on the ground, but standing up that's a war. That is a huge war. Uh, so we jump from there to the main event of David Branch up against Christoph Jutko. David Branch making a, in my opinion, subpar return to the UFC a after lot of his world, that opinion. world yep. series of fighting yep. tear that he was on. Uh, so he gets a split decision over yeah. Jocko. He even says he knows he needs to do better. Uh, Frankie Edgar continuing his yeah. decade-long career, winning over Yair Rodriguez with a doctor. Never stoppage. count Frankie out. His eye, Yair's eye, eye was, was brutal. Ugh, gross. Uh, backpack wins over George Mazadal. Do you agree with this? I mean, uh, he backpacked yeah. him. Yeah. I he mean, backpacked him for a good portion of the rounds. Earn so. it. Earn it. Stop it. But I know. It's a split I decision. That's the, I kept hearing us in the background. I'm like, man, I'm fucking pissed. But I was like, man, do earn something. Yeah. something. Well, I kept it. waiting for the slam. He was like, just slam him. But he yeah. knew if I lift my chin up to slam you, you're going to choke me. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So now uh, Damian Maya will face Tyron Woodley. Uh, Ty- Maybe. Because it sounds like Woodley's using his fucking... Elect to choose like he's not going to fight him. Tyrone Woodley already started training with a Jansport backpack full of weights. <laughs> not a lie. Courtesy of Brian Stan. Not <laughs> a lie. Go check that out on his Instagram. You can see him doing weightlifting, running, yeah, yeah. some dodging skills, a lot of uh, stuff with a backpack on. Brian Stan immediately after the fight gave him a backpack, a Jansport backpack, and jumped on his back as well. Uh, and then you had Joanna, Joanna champion. champion up against Jessica Andrange. This went to unanimous decision, but really, Joanna just dominated. Yeah, dominated this fight. Yeah, she, it was like even though we had the nice hematoma, I mean, I don't think it was as good as uh, what was his names that fought against Aldo Eastridge. No, no, uh, uh, no. Look it up. Yep. Massive but, hematoma. Yeah. Massive <laughs> hematoma UFC. God. Jose Aldo, massive. Hemo- he gave it to what's his name? Hemo- it was in their fight. Uh, Mark Hominick. Remember he had, oh, looked like God, an alien. The Hominick one, yes. Coming yes. out of his fucking head. Alien. Hominick, alien. Yep. So, anyway, Joanna had, he had, she had a good size team. So those together. That but works. she just she knew how to keep her distance. She knew how to stop the takedown. She dominated this fight. No, she did really well. Really well. So, she her belt. She's we'll see if she goes against. Record. We'll see if she goes up against Rose for the record. And then after that, makes the jump to 125. That's And she did call out Rose. Yep. And uh, yeah, and then 125 after that. Yeah. And then Steve Mioic made quick work of Junior Dos Santos. Who, by the way, said he thought he was winning the fight. <laughs> Junior Dos Santos thought really? he was winning the fight. Really? When you lost at 222 in the first round. <laughs> and Steve A just like puts you on your ass with a punch. A punch. Uh, a punch. This is the second guy he's got as they're backing up. Yeah. Ridiculous. Good old Chuck Adele's heat. <laughs> but hey, I will give you this. He, he fucked up Steve A's leg real quick. That's maybe why he thought he was winning the fight. Yeah, yeah no, but, that's but fair. That was about I'm, it. I'm very glad to see Stipe retain the belt because now we have um, another era of champions who are relatively dominant. I mean, we have. Hopefully, Joanna, it's the only uh, championship that Cleveland keeps this year. Just going to throw that out there. <laughs> <laughs> just throwing that out there. Hopefully. Uh, going for the Celtics, man. Really am. Really am. All right, just, before we just move into that, up against Cleveland. I really am. I and really before am. we move into anything else, uh, last night at Tachi Palace, uh, Angel. Angel. The Dream Deanda, he uh, decisive first round TKO, and Buddy Wallace, both out of uh, Last Stand Fight Team in Oakdale, both first round. Uh, Buddy Wallace's was uh, a doctor stoppage, I believe. The guy sat down, nice. and the, yeah. So both were first round. Congratulations. Angel uh, called out Dana White. I heard. Oh yeah, yeah. for a fight. Saying he wants to fight, he wants yeah. the UFC. He said, "Pick me up." Yeah, Very I talked cool. to him uh, Tuesday at the gym, and they're talking to a, they're they're talking to as many people as they can, and he's on standby for about. 
three or four different uh, bigger promotions. Cool. So good for Angel, man. Yeah, hopes he gets something, man. Bellator 179 just happened in London. You can uh, watch it live. Tape not, delay. Not live tape delay. <laughs> live tape delay on Spike TV later this evening, or we can tell you the results now and we can yell spoiler. Can we want to yell spoiler alert? Spoiler alert! Spoiler Let's alert! Let's just do it in the form of picks. Spoiler alert! <laughs> we're going to pick uh, the winners right now. Don't uh, want to know the UFC or the Bellator 179 results. Pause or skip forward to about whatever we get to. It's uh, going to take three minutes. So Kevin Ferguson Jr. went up against DJ Griffin. Yep. Uh, this went spoiler one round three forty. Kevin wins. Slice Alex, Jr. That's Slice Jr. That's Slice Jr. wins. Yeah. To kick off the entire main card, then Alex Lahore go up, goes up against... Whoa. Uh, what? What? Lahore. <laughs> goes up against Dan Edwards. This also ended very quickly in the second round. 50 Spoiler! Seconds. Spoiler. Alex Lahore wins. Check Congo. Goes up against Augusto Sakal. This Sakai? Was, uh, sure. Uh, that looks like an L to me. Everybody had to drink because it was a split decision. Yeah. Uh, split decision in favor of Czech Spoiler. Congo. Spoiler, there you go. <laughs> and then Linton Vassell up against Liam McGreary. Poor McGreary, man. Oh, man. Uh, spoiler. <laughs> yeah, when McGreary it happens in, wins. Yeah, no, I'm kidding. No, when it happens Arm in triangle. a triangle, I mean, it, it could have been anybody's fight. You, and know, you, just, you just got in the wrong spot. Rory so McDonald. Rear naked choke up against Paul, Paul Semtex yeah. in the second round, 145. Way to go, Rory Red King McDonald. Yeah. I hope <laughs> when we watch it, he's like, he, he just protected his face because that's how I see his like He's like, just he's like, don't hit my nose. nose. Does don't he wear the nose. LeBron mask where it's like just, just <laughs> on the face? <laughs> Who's that, Kevin Nash? Is, is he allowed to wear that just little? Who was the guy in the Lakers? Was it Kevin Nash? What the fuck thing. was that guy? Can you wear the Silence of the Lamb mask? The whole thing. Yeah. You can. Yeah, if you want to. And then we have Invicta going down uh, tomorrow uh, with. Uh, oh, wow. Roxanne Madoffrey's fighting. Yep, fighting against uh, uh, Sarah D'Angelo. And then we got. El Lilio. Sure. El Lilio. Uh, we've got a North Carolina girl, Kelly Fagels. We've interviewed yeah. her before. And Yaya Racon. Uh, she's on the undercard, I believe. It is. Eddie Ann Gomes. Yes. Going to be fighting on that card as well. No, right there, Andrew down at the bottom. I, I see that. Cheyenne. That is, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's out of MMA Gold and MMA Pink. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, we, we have that thing right there. Yep. <laughs> That's the thing. That's everything. Uh, we made through a show. Yay! <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening. We got shit to do. Uh, tune in to SD underscore MMA on Twitter and Instagram. Split Decision MMA podcast on Facebook. Split Decision MMA.com on any web browser. And of course, anywhere podcasts or broadcasts. Big thanks to MyMMANews.com for our sponsorship, as well as Dependable Solutions. Innovate your business with Dependable Solutions. So check them out and check us out and tell your friends and we love you. Yeah, yeah if you want some MMA gear, of, uh, World Series of Fighting. Yes, right now, yeah. if you need MMA gear, go to MMANews.com. They have a store up for some MMA gear. MyMMANews.com? Use- MyMMANews.com. Get your gear. Yep. And from the Ruloff Family Studios, it's Bueller, Dodge, and Dennis saying have a good night. We'll see you at the fights. Maybe. <laughs>